Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Under Sheriff Kevin McMahill, and I'll be briefing you this afternoon on the officer involved shooting that occurred Thursday, December 31st, 2015, on our New Year's Eve. As I do with all these briefings, I'll start with some opening comments and then get to the facts of the case so you understand how the event started and what led our officers to take the actions that they took as we understand it today. It is our job and our duty after an officer involved shooting to do a thorough investigation. We comb over every single detail of the event so we can put together a complete picture and timeline of what occurred. We count down how many shots were fired, we document the crime scene, we download body cam footage when we have it, and we ask a lot of questions. And as you know, we conduct both a concurrent FIT, which is a criminal investigation, and assert the critical incident review team investigation, which is an administrative investigation, to look at policy, procedure, training, and tactics associated with every event. Our goal is to be able to come before the public to provide you with the details as we know them today. It's also an opportunity for our agency to do a self-examination of our response to ensure our officers followed policy and the sh that the shooting was both lawful and necessary. This event began as the U.S. Marshal's Office was attempting to arrest a 23-year-old man out of Phoenix, Arizona. The suspect named in the warrant with, was Keith Childress, C-H-I-L-D-R-E-S-S. Childress was wanted on 10 counts to include violent felonies. Two weeks before the shooting, Childress was to appear in a Phoenix courtroom for sentencing. His family showed up along with his defense attorney, but he did not. Information led the marshal's office to Las Vegas where Childress was staying with a relative. Based on the fact that Childress was facing a lengthy stay in prison, it appears he skipped his sentencing and fled to Las Vegas to avoid prison time. I'll give you the facts as I know them today. This is officer involved shooting number 16. Same time last year, we had 16 officer involved shootings. This event occurred again December 31st at 2015, or of the year 2015 at 2.04 p.m. The type of call was a wanted person call. The location of the officer involved shooting was 8335 Gilded Crown. That's in Las Vegas. The time of shots being fired was at 2.22 p.m. And you'll see an overhead photograph uh, of the locations both of, of uh, where they were contacted and where the officer involved shooting occurred. Our involved officers in this incident are Robert Bohannon, B-O-H-A-N-O-N. He is 37 years old and he's been with the LVMPD for the last 18 years. He was armed with a Glock 21, 45 caliber handgun and Sergeant Bohannon fired four rounds during this incident. The second involved officer was Blake Walford, W-A-L-F-O-R-D. He is 27 years old and he's been with LVMPD for one year. He was armed with a Sig Sauer 226 9mm handgun and Officer Walford fired five rounds during this incident. The suspect is Keith Childress. You see his photograph next to me, C-H-I-L-D-R-E-S-S, -S, 23 years old. During this incident, he was struck by five rounds that were fired. The suspect's criminal history in this, he was actively wanted out of the Phoenix Police Department for two counts of aggravated assault, two counts of armed robbery, two counts of kidnapping, burglary in the first degree, and two counts of theft. I thought it'd be important to maybe give you a little overview of what those warrants entailed. And these warrants were issued by the Maricopa County Superior Court for a Phoenix Police Department case from December 17th of 15 for failure to appear. The charges stemmed from an incident that occurred on March 3rd of 2013, where Childress and three others were involved in a home invasion where they identified themselves as bounty hunters. The suspects forced their way into the residence and got at gunpoint, took computers, electronic equipment, weapons, and a medical marijuana card. The victim identified one of the suspects, which in turn led to the arrest of the other involved suspects. A subsequent search warrant in this case found items from the home invasion in the room of Mr. Childress. Criminal history he also has priors for kidnapping. All of these are out of Arizona. Kidnapping, armed robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, theft, and marijuana possession, and then a minor charge out of California for obstructing a police officer. The suspect's weapon in this case, the suspect was not armed in this incident. The details of the officer involved shooting are as follows. On December 17th, 2015, an arrest warrant was issued for Childress for failure to appear in court with cautions on the warrant of Childress being both armed and dangerous. On December 27th of 15, the Arizona Wanted Violent Offender Task Force was actively looking to arrest Childress. Information was developed and passed on to the United States Marshals located here in Las Vegas that Childress was uh, actually located in Las Vegas 
and that the marshals uh, began actively looking for him due to his fugitive status. Investigation led the teams to the area of 8350 West Desert Inn, where they believed Childress to be located, and this occurred on December 30th of 15. On that particular date, he was not located. The following day on December 31st at 8 a.m., the United States Marshals uh, set up surveillance on Childress at his family, friend's house or apartment at 8350 West Desert Inn. And at approximately 2 p.m., the United States Marshals saw Childress exit the apartment with his family friend. Childress and his friend were walking towards the friend's car in the parking lot of the complex. And as the Marshals moved in to arrest Childress, he fled the area on foot. The vehicle and the person Childress was with uh, were detained and there was a firearm that was located inside of that vehicle. The United States Marshals immediately requested, requested assistance from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department and notified us that a foot pursuit was occurring. Area Command officers and supervisors from the Enterprise Area Command went to the scene immediately to assist the United States Marshals. It was reported to Metro from U.S. Marshals via radio that the weapon was in the car and Childress was wanted for attempted murder. This information about the attempted murder charge later turned out to be false. U.S. 134. Control U.S. 130. Go ahead. The subject is 444, attempt homicide. Acknowledged. Three is on channel. Air 3, U.S. 134 and U.S. 130 had a subject take off on foot. He's 440 for attempted murder. Address is 8300 Golden Cypress Avenue. Officers from the Enterprise Area Command quickly arrived and set up a perimeter to contain Childress. Per our policy, K-9 and the Air Unit were immediately requested and dispatched to assist in locating Childress. A citizen on Palace Heights, Palace Heights, called 911 stating that Childress was in her backyard. Our air unit arrived and observed Childress running across backyard walls and began providing directions to the responding officers. The air unit directed uh, nearby officers immediately into Childress's location. Sergeant Bohannon was the first officer to arrive and he observed Childress on Gilded Crown and immediately began to issue Childress commands. Childress continued crossing the street, ignoring the commands from Sergeant Bohannon, and kept his right hand concealed away from Sergeant Bohannon. Childress did not comply with Sergeant Bohannon's commands and walked to the west side of 8335 Gilded Crown Court in between the houses, which you see up on the screen there. Um, Sergeant Bohannon observed Childress leaning on the northwest corner of the garage at that location. Uh, Childress was behind a position of cover of the front porch pillar and he was partially concealing the right side of his body. Sergeant Bohannon, Officer Walford, and two U.S. Marshals took up a position of cover behind a vehicle one house east of Childress. Sergeant Bohannon issued approximately 24 verbal commands to Childress over a period of 2 minutes and 13 seconds. Sergeant Bohannon saw what he believed to be a firearm in Childress's right hand at his side. Several of the commands that Sergeant Bohannon uh, addressed directly to Childress were, drop the gun, get on the ground, let me see your hands, surrender, hands up, get your hands up. You'll hear some of that in the body-worn camera video I'm going to show you. Sergeant Bohannon told Childress, if you advance toward us, you will be shot. After approximately two minutes, Childress began to advance on Sergeant Bohannon and Officer Walford, and Sergeant Bohannon again yelled, do not walk towards us, do not walk towards us. Childress ignored these commands and continued to advance with the object clutched in his right hand inside of his pocket. Sergeant Bohannon and Officer Walford fired their weapons, striking Childress five times. Childress fell to the ground and continued to move, but would not drop the item in his hand. Officers continued to command Childress to drop what they believed to be a firearm, but he would not. A custody plan was then implemented after development and K-9 was deployed. The officers took uh, uh, the officers approached and then took Childress into custody. Medical was immediately summoned to the scene and pronounced Childress deceased at 2.35 p.m. The item Childress was holding was a cell phone which was removed from his right front pant pocket. The information LVMPD received from the ar marshals about Childress being wanted for attempted murder again was determined to be inaccurate. In this particular case, Officer Walford did have a body camera during this incident but he did fail to activate it. 
Sergeant Bohannon was wearing a body-worn camera, and I will share that footage with you now. So watch now, he's up here, five houses on the right-hand side, he's gonna come through the, uh, down the middle of the street now. That's him on your right. Get over the ground! Get over the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! He's got something in his hand! He's walking west down away from them. Let me see your hand! Let me see your hand! He's got something in his hand. Hands up! Hands up! He's got a 413! Get your hands up! Yep. Get your hands up! You're gonna be surrounded! k it's coming! Let me see your hand! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop your gun! Surrender! Drop your gun! Drop your gun! Drop it now! Drop your fire now! Guys, he has a gun in his right hand. Sorry, gun away, he'll pay out gauges and rifles and such. Drop the gun! <laughs> if you adapt this, you will be shot! Drop your gun! Do not walk towards us! Do not walk towards us! So one of the things I'll just address for you is, is you know, when you see these body cam videos, what the way we have them now is they're actually positioned up on the officer's collar. And oftentimes when they have their arms extended for that firearm, they move around. Sometimes you don't get the best view. That's one of the things that the CERT team is con uh, conducting some investigation on to find a better location. Some folks like to have them here, but when you have them in the middle of your chest, it's even more obstructed. So we haven't really found a perfect way to get uh, the best use of those body-worn camera videos, um, but that continues as part of uh, some of the critical incident review process that we are undertaking.